You know, in these over-emotional times, people are always saying that it's perfectly fine for a guy to cry, to show his emotions, to express his emotions. <laughs> Oh, the bullshit piles up so fast, you need wings to stay above it, in the immortal words of uh, Michael Herr in Apocalypse Now. But anyway, the point, and it's a very serious point. See, you can't cry at the drop of the hat. No, because you'll lose all authority. If you cry, well, let me put it this way, you have to know when to cry. I'm putting this video on Patreon because it's, it's, just, it's just sad, but pointing this out, that you, as a man, have very few opportunities to cry, and that you should in fact rarely, if ever, cry in public. And I have to put it on Patreon, behind a paywall, because if I put it on free uh, YouTube, I'll get banned for it. I mean, what the fuck kind of society are we living in for crying out loud? But anyway, getting to the point. You can't cry in public. You can't show emotions in public. This is something that is incredibly detrimental to your status. Because, see, we are all animals of status, of hierarchy. And where you are in the pecking order is extremely important. If you are higher up, you'll get what you want. If you're lower, you won't get what you want. And that's why you should never cry, except for a few very specific exceptions. Yeah, before I get into the exceptions, we got to understand, you know, where did this fashion come from? Because it's a fashion, okay? This, this bullshit fashion that it's okay to cry and show your emotions and all this shit, right? It's a fashion that started in the 70s and grew and became mainstream in the 80s. I remember it. When I was growing up, men were the strong, silent type. They bottled in their emotions. They didn't show emotions. Mm -hmm. They were very practical, very pragmatic, and this uh, touchy-feely emotional shit, that was crap that people out in California did. No. Normal people in the Western democracies, in fact in the whole goddamn fucking world, the men did not show their emotions at the drop of a hat. Women didn't either, by the way. Women were not these hysterical little crazy people that they've become now. No. Men, women held in their emotions and revealed them very carefully in private. But it was in the 70s and into the 80s that this notion that you should express your emotions became, like I said, a fashion. It became in vogue. And so people started to do it. And what happened was that there was a positive reinforcement for those who showed emotion. Yeah, because they were following the fashion. They were following the trend. And that always happens to everybody who follows the fashion and follows the trend. When there, a fashion arises, for whatever reason, no matter how absurd the fashion, the early adopters get praised for it. And that's how the fashion starts to gain speed. And the men who showed emotion, who started crying in public over whatever the fuck, huh? well, they got praised for it. And so that signaled to other men to do the same. And all of a sudden, everybody's fucking crying. Everybody's whining and bitching and moaning. And that's the society you have now. Yeah? And that's what happened. It was, it, it was a simple fashion. And see, what's key is that see, since this fashion started, you know, the, the guys who cried, their status, paradoxically, didn't fall. It rose, at least in public, at least like a, 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 a kind of like intellectually. Well, it rose. And so more guys would do it. They would cry in public over whatever the fuck. Mm -hmm. And people would say, oh, isn't he great? He's showing his emotions. And women would say, oh, isn't that great? He's showing his emotions. But secretly, they kind of like despise these men. Yeah. Secretly, these men became kind of like, I'm not going to fuck him. That's what girls thought. Yeah, because girls viscerally don't like a guy who cries. No, they reject him. They think he's a pussy. They don't want a pussy. They want somebody who can handle himself, handle himself and handle her, which is the key issue. And so what happened was that uh, men started showing off how in touch with their emotions they were. That was the catchphrase. Are you in touch with your emotions? And as they started doing this, yeah, they showed their emotions more and more on the regular. And they were publicly praised, but privately, the women don't want to fuck them anymore. That's what happened. And as they were not fucked, these guys sort of like doubled down on this showing their emotions shit. 
because they figured, well, th th this is the way, this is what women want. The way, they want men who show their emotions. And I've showed my emotions and I'm not getting laid, so I'll show them even more. I'll cry even more. And you know, maybe I'll get some pussy. <laughs> and of course this didn't happen. Of course not. Come on, what the fuck, man? What the fuck are you thinking, yeah? Of course it didn't happen. And so these soy boy, cucked out little faggot bitches who would cry at the drop of a hat, right? They became involuntary incels. Mm -hmm. I mean, a lot of them, the, the guys who call themselves involuntary incels, you know, at least admit it, that they're socially awkward and they're not getting laid. But these soy boy, faggy ass bitches, they pretended that they were like the modern man, okay? They pretended that they were the ideal. I mean, self-delusion knows no bounds, okay? Remember that. Uh, anyway, uh, the point, the, the serious point. See, you can get a lot further by simply not showing your emotions because all the guys are doing it and the women are rejecting them. Mm -hmm. The women they don't reject are the guys who've got their shit together, the guys who've got their shit down tight, the guys who aren't showing their emotions like little faggoty ass bitches. The fact is there are very, very few times when you can show your emotions. And the reason or the times that you can is very, very key. See, because you see, if you cry over the fact that you're lonely, you're a bitch. Uh, and no woman was gonna wanna fuck you, of course not. Because you're showing weakness, okay? When you cry, you show weakness. I mean, look at a child. A child cries, why? Because they got a boo-boo, you know? I'm talking a little three or four year old or two year old or whatever. You know, a, a, an infant, a newborn and whatnot. Yeah, they'll cry because they're hot. They'll cry because they're hungry. They'll cry because they're sleepy because that's the only thing they know how to do. But once the child knows how to talk, when do they cry? When they're in pain. Mm -hmm. When they're in pain, they cry because they want attention. And see, women, when they look at a man who cries at the drop of a hat, they give him attention because it's their natural instinct. But at the same time, they look at it, him like a baby. And they don't see him as a sexual being. Mm? Or if they do, it's, it's, it's very, you know, revved down. Huh? The guys who don't cry, the guys who are men, the guys who are tough, the women look at him like he's not a bitch. See? Because... Those guys, those soy, boy, soy boys who are crying like that, they are showing vulnerability, weakness. And that's one form of crying. The other form of crying is when you are showing extraordinary pain over something that has happened to you. Mm -hmm. And that's very, very different. Suppose you're lonely. Mm -hmm. You're just lonely and you're just like, oh man, I'm so lonely and I want to cry. Okay? Do you cry in front of a woman? No, because that would be showing vulnerability. But suppose that, say, your dog dies. You've had this dog for years and years and years, and the dog gets hit by a car or something like that and dies suddenly. Mm -hmm. Or maybe it doesn't die suddenly. Maybe it's like an illness, cancer. This happens to dogs, of course. And the dog dies. And you're in pain. Huh? And you cry then? That's perfectly fine. Because you are showing pain. You are showing how important the dog was. And, of course, you cry over the death of a friend, the death of a parent. God forbid that it ever happens that you die of the death of a child, right? All of these, uh, you know, crying over those sorts of things, that's fine because you are expressing the pain of the loss, which is perfectly acceptable, okay? And it will never show you to be a weak man. On the contrary, it will show that you are in touch with your feelings. It will show that this loss that you experienced was so huge in your life that the pain just makes you weep. Mm? That is acceptable. That's perfectly fine. When you are in great pain over a great loss, no problem. It's when you cry because of a vulnerability, because of a weakness that you have, then, then you're being a bitch. Your favorite sports team, you know, they're, they're playing basketball, it's a, NBA Finals and it's game seven and you know, they're winning by one point and the other side, you know, lands the, 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 the dunk or the, the three pointer at the buzzer and you lose, your team loses and you, you just like rage and burst into tears. That's actually fine, <laughs> paradoxically enough. Yeah, because you know, it's the pain of a loss. And that's the point, the pain of a loss of something that has hurt you. Of course, you know, you shouldn't cry over a fucking sports team, okay? You're crying over fucking millionaires who lost a game. That's pathetic, okay? But if you cry over the loss of a friend, 
of a family member, of somebody whom you really admired. For instance, I did a video on my GL channel where I, at the end, I pretty much broke out crying over the death of Neil Peart, a man whom I greatly respected and admired, a man who had provided for me in my youth uh, uh, a North Pole, a North Star. Huh? He had been very, very important to me because I respected him so much and how he had lived his life. I'm not ashamed of that. I'm not at all. I mean, if people think that I was a pit, a bitch or a pussy or whatever the fuck, I don't care because it was the, the shock of this loss because he had been had cancer for like three years, but he hadn't told a soul. And so all of a sudden, one day I wake up and the guy is dead. And I'm like, what the fuck happened? You know, I mean, it was a sudden shock. And of course, it hurt me badly, you know, and when I was doing the video and thinking about it, uh, because as I'm doing the video, I'm thinking about his life and his career and how much he affected me. And yeah, at the end, I was teary-eyed. I'm not ashamed of that because it's expressing the depth of your loss. And that's acceptable, but it's not acceptable when you show vulnerability. That's the issue. Vulnerability, mm -mm. your weak spots, uh -uh. you got to guard them. Uh, that's the point. That's the point of being a man. You have to guard your weak spots. You have to protect them mm -hmm. because everybody has soft spots. Everybody has weaknesses, insecurities. It's perfectly natural. Mm -hmm. And your goal is not to expose those soft spots to any passing stranger so that they can you know, poke at them. No, 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 no. Your goal is to protect them, to guard them. Mm -hmm. And you should not be showing them to anyone. Huh? You should know which ones they are. It's crucial that you know what your soft spots are. But you cannot be showing them to other people by expressions of feelings, of emotions, by crying over them. No, because when you do that, when you show your vulnerable spots, you open yourself up to attack. And you can't have that. No way, no fucking way. Yeah? You have to guard those with your life. Every man has a breaking point. Every man has soft spots. It's perfectly natural and normal. And the thing is, see, as a man, you have to learn what those vulnerabilities are, what that breaking point is. And of course, you want to be pushing that breaking point, uh, raising it, mm -hmm. making it harder and harder to break you. Uh -huh. And that's why it's so important to go out into the world and to suffer defeats and failures and get back up and push again and push again and keep on going. Because all those little hits that you take, they make you tougher. Mm -hmm. And that makes your breaking point higher and higher, more and more difficult for the world to break you because the world is out to break you. Make no mistake about it. Mm -hmm. And so you have to toughen yourself up. But at the same time, you have these vulnerable spots and these vulnerable spots, they will always be with you. They're always going to be those things that hurt you. Mm -hmm. And you have to protect them. You have to guard them. You can't afford to show them. To show them is just to invite aggression, attack. To show those vulnerable spots is just cruising for a bruising, as I used to say when I was growing up. So understand when you can cry. When you experience a great loss, and it's a serious loss, not like a fucking basketball team. Huh? When you experience a great loss of someone whom you loved deeply, hmm, that's perfectly fine. That's perfectly acceptable. But crying over a vulnerability, crying over a soft spot, no, oh, no. You're only setting yourself up for failure. And what's more, it's not merely that women won't respect you. And it's not merely that other men won't respect you. They might say to your face that it's perfectly fine to show your emotions, but they'll look at you like you're a little fucking bitch, okay? It's not even that. The key issue is that, see, you won't respect yourself. Because you'll think back to those times that you cried in front of other people over whatever the fuck, and you'll cringe. You'll just be like, oof, I can't believe I fucking did that in front of those people. Those people who, you know, they didn't give a fuck about me. huh? And you'll cringe about it and think back and realize that what you were really doing, following the stupid fashion, was you were trying to actually curry favor by showing how submissive you are. That's what you were doing. And you will hate yourself for it. Mm -hmm. And of course, you'll hate yourself so much that it could be that you twist it around and say, oh, no, that was a good thing. It's not. It's a bad thing. 
You are lowering yourself in the eyes of others, and most important of all, you are lowering yourself in your eyes.